So, so do you want to start the recording? Yep. I just started the recording. So this is being recorded to the cloud and it will be uploaded by the end of the week to our Town of Amherst YouTube channel. At this time, I will turn this meeting over to Dave Zomek and make you the host. Sounds good because Aaron uh, won't be here. And then if I have to leave, I'll make somebody on this group the host. Great. Have a good meeting. Thanks, Angela. So welcome to the Conservation Commission's Land Use Policy Meeting. We have present Commissioner Bruce Stedman and uh, Michelle Lobb, and we have Dave Zomack, um, Assistant Director of Conservation and Development. Did I get your title right? It's good. Assistant Town Manager. I get them mixed up. Excuse me, Dave. It's all good. Um, we have an agenda today where we're going to, it's probably more robust than we can get through, but uh, we're going to talk about the mission statement for the policies and focus on definitions. Probably not spend much time on that. We're going to talk about forest management or revised policy. We're going to look at rules from other towns having to do with firearms and hunting and recommendation uh, on what people might wear on conservation land during hunting season. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, on the on the agenda uh, to look at the draft policy for involving dogs and uh, I'll be lucky if we get there. Um, so, Bruce, you have your hand up. Very quickly, um, uh, my calendar is such that I cannot attend the November 26th meeting. Um, I'll be on the road between, I don't know, Akron and Chicago somewhere. That sounds like it's pretty close to Thanksgiving. Yes, it's, we're headed to Thanksgiving. What's your schedule look like, Michelle? Um, I'm just looking right now. What, sorry, what date was this? Uh, November 26th. Tuesday before Thanksgiving. School will still be in session. Um, I, I can make it, if, but I'm also happy to skip but, that one. Yeah, I'm not anxious to skip a meeting. Maybe we can, uh, time is short. To get it for getting things done, maybe we could find uh, another time somewhere in there to make up for it. Can we? Uh, well, we don't have to do that now. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. And then the other thing I know is that the second meeting of December is the 24th. So we may want to. What? what? We can't meet then? <laughs> How about the 17th on that? I'm panicking. <laughs> well, that's why if we sh we shove it ahead a week to the 17th. Okay. Um, do we have time beyond this meeting to reschedule those things? Can we yep. put the agenda for next time? Yep. Okay. How about you, Dave? What's your calendar look like for those days? Uh, I'm probably fine for both those. I'm okay. Good. I'll be here. You're not going to take off early on uh, the 24th? You no, know, very rarely take time off. So I'll be here. <laughs> Not very rarely close off your light before I, I get emails from you about the same time I'm sending emails. <laughs> I'll be. I'll okay, be so I'm going to, uh, and unless there's other things to talk about, I'm going to share my, can I share my screen? Dave? Oh, goodness. Who put me in charge of this meeting? Um, uh, it says share. Sharing Dave, is if you, Dave, if you go to your share screen, there's a little arrow next to it. Click on the arrow, and then it says. We're good. I think I just allowed him to share. Okay. You should be, you should be able to share, Alex. Okay. And then before I share a screen, I want to ask if you can see if any member of the public is on. There are no members of the public. No. No attendees. 
Okay, so I can't see that. So if somebody from the public appears, would you I can see let, it. Us, let us know? Mm -hmm. Will do. Okay. So I have up the mission statement. And I, I brought, I bring, whoops, my screen just went blank. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can, we can hear you. We just can't see that you're sharing anything. Okay, it went blank again. Mm -hmm. And then blank again. I can try. Um, now everything's huge. Hold on. Let me try and... Bruce, do you, uh, is this the uh, forestry document you're trying to share? No. It's up on the Mission. screen. No. I got, I've got something that's like a font 82 on my screen. Okay. Let me try. I don't know how to get rid of this. Can you see it? Uh, it says, uh, it there says, we go. Please yes. Move this window away from the shared application. Well, I've shared it, so you, you should be able to see my version. Yeah, but I, can't, I can't get back to Zoom. Michelle, can you see it? I can see the mission statement. I can't. Wow, this is really weird. Like... Um, I mean, I can just look at it on my screen. It... Okay, so I, I, I brought up the mission statement, not because I want to go through it, but because uh, when we look at the definitions, Many of the words in the first couple of lines of the mission statement are defined. And so, um, God, I wish I could get out of this. Excuse me. Can I just share my screen, see if that works? Sure, but I think Alex won't be able to see it unless he stops right. screen sharing. Can I Can I stop his Please screen share, this maybe? Window from shared application. How do I do that? And Michelle is now sharing, and now I can see Michelle sharing the mission statement. So it, Alex, it looks different than it normally does. Like I, um, I don't know that the configuration is different than it has been previously in Zoom. So okay, I'm. I think what I'm going to try and do is restart my computer to get rid of this screen. Okay, and then yeah. jump back on? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump right back on. Okay, I'll let you in, or you'll just jump in as a panelist. There, I hope testing the fire alarm here at Town Hall. I'm hoping I do not have to leave the building. I think that seems to happen a lot. <laughs> Does it happen a lot? Not a lot, but we regularly yeah. they time us. The fire department times oh. us getting out of this building. Yeah, it's pretty official. I think this is there. Hmm. I don't like Tuesdays. Tuesdays are just weird. Uh, let's see maybe if this becomes an issue why are we looking at the mission statement why don't we just move on to forestry you know okay no i mean i'll give him we'll give a minute for uh, alex to get back in i don't see him coming in yet i wonder if he's having a connectivity issue hmm I 
I enjoyed the new um, town green in front of town hall on Saturday at the farmer's market. Oh, nice. Yeah. Did you go? We had little kids and had a picnic with our farmer's market stuff. And there Nice. is a guy there with um, a bunch of Angora bunnies. Oh, the bunny <laughs> guy. Yes. you know, the Yes. bunny guy. Oh, uh, yes. We know the bunny guy. <laughs> well, my kids enjoyed the bunnies. But, um, a couple dogs walked by and were very interested in it, but nothing, nothing bad happened. But they're kind of loose on the, loose on the green. <laughs> Yep, the bunny man, yes. Okay, Alex, you are back. Yeah, so um, I'm seeing everybody's face, so nothing's shared. Do Do you let's want to see. try sharing again, Alex? Yeah, let's see if I can do that. Or Bruce could because he has the version you two were commenting on. Yeah, just maybe um, don't share, Alex, in case the same thing happens again. Maybe Bruce could share, and we Yeah, can see if if you want. Okay, uh, make the make the definitions. It's uh, Appendix A and B file. Just bring that up. Okay, well, that'll take a second for me to get it online here. So what I did was, yeah, here we go. No, that's mission statement. Okay, Stedman suggestions. When did you make those suggestions? This morning. Oh, I didn't see that. I thought that document was fairly stable. Well, I just was trying to catch up. Appendix A and B, there it is. Okay, so this All is right. a... This is a file that I created and I added it to the table of contents. It's just the beginning of a list of acronyms that we use in the document. Not not intending to discuss it. If you want to submit or to add acronyms, please do. I'm just stumbling upon them and putting them in. Mm -hmm. So going down, Bruce, to B. Okay. So these are in alphabetical order. I couldn't think of any other way to do it. Um, and some of them I think are too long, um, but that's where I started so that you folks can uh, take a look at it and see what you think needs to be included as a definition. If you don't like the definition, please come up with something better. Um, I searched the web for most of them, so they're not my idea of how something's Uh, to, to be defined. So if you just, for example, here's best management practices and these come, uh, this pops up in the agricultural policy primarily. And um, so both the first and second come from the web as do the examples. So Alex, when I went through it, I checked the one that I thought was more in keeping with what we would want. Do you want us to weigh in in that way, saying, I like number two for versus? What, I, what I'd rather do is save time so we can get through the other ones and have you. Yeah, I meant by responding online. I, I didn't mean right now. Yeah, right. Yes, please. So okay. if you want to go down to commercial. Sure. Um, this is pretty straightforward, concerned with or engaged in commerce. making or intended to make a profit. I'd like to draft something having to do with our commercial policy and come back to you at another time on that. And then conserve, enhance, come from the mission statement. Um, we had in kind, out of kind, out of place. Uh, and I stuck the word mitigation in front so they all come together closely in the list of definitions. So. And if you just want to scroll scroll down, if somebody hasn't looked at this, um, no-till farming, non-lethal methods, um, going on down. So if 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 you folks want to look at these and comment. and send them back, that would be great. Rather than discuss it now, I just want to show you that it's there. Sounds good. And the structures 
the structures definition comes from Bruce. And I got it from the building inspector. Okay. So there's nothing in here that I invented, uh, but I'd be interested in your agreement or disagreement and how to make it better. And also what words, as we go along, this should be a, li a living document and what words should be included. Uh, I can tell you that when I worked on it, I assumed that the eyes that were reading our policy are new eyes and may not be familiar with any of these terms. So that's that's how I went at it. So I I think my personal feeling is that it's uh, too many words, too many choices, and I'd be interested in what you think. So we'll all have a look at that. Yeah. Really? That's all I really wanted to cover there. If there's anything that somebody wants to say now before we move on, that'd be great. Uh, the only thing is I'll do better about getting back in a more timely way. That's okay. We're all busy. <laughs> My weekend was shattered with all kinds of unexpected things happening, which were delightful. But uh, I wound up, I have a meeting this afternoon at two o'clock in Canada <laughs> on a land deal and people were away and didn't see documents and total confusion this morning. So uh, life never goes in a straight line, as I'm sure Dave knows. And Michelle, any comments? Um, just thinking about the BMPs seem to be more focused on like EPA and water stuff, but maybe thinking That's about expanding that, that would be... Be my guest. I just grabbed what I saw on the web. Okay. Um, it's a place to begin. That's all I can say. So I'd like to move to forest management if I could. Yep. You gave me some comments. Bruce, if you want to bring that up. Yeah. Bring your comments up. Uh, so last time I tried to have a document to go to the commission and questions were raised because it, it, it apparently it was too terse, not clear. So now it's much longer than it was and maybe too long, but I worked on it quite a bit last night and uh, waiting for, and I hope the version you're gonna bring up has the new text in red so people can see what was added. Is anybody? Uh -huh. Is anybody colorblind? Okay, I was worried about that when using track changes because the new stuff's in red. Okay. So, um, and Dave, uh, can you can you enlarge this on your screen? So we can just blow the whole thing up so it fills the whole monitor up here. Up there? Here. Up in the upper right hand corner, just expand the screen. Uh, there's a dash, an X, and right in the middle, there's a button you can push to expand the screen. Dash on it. Oh, I don't always Dave. see. Dave, uh, this first paragraph, um, let's see, I put a time limit on this, forest management, but 10 minutes, so we can get to the other stuff, but we'll probably blow by that. This first paragraph I wrote sitting at my desk on what my impression is. For example, I'm not sure we have 2,000 acres. I think you told me we had more than that. We do. We have something like it's about 2,300, maybe up to 2,400, something like that, but approximately 2,000 acres. For does, okay. Does that and include then, APR land or just conservation? No. Wow. No, because APR land is private. We don't have oh. any control over APR land. 
really. So I I wrote a little bit about my uh, about the history of of the land being farmed, and this is what I've gathered. I'm not sure it's totally accurate. So if somebody like Dave in his spare time can look at this and say, no, you got it wrong or how to say it better. Uh, it, it basically talks, it's leading into a discussion about forests where the farms were land use changed, farms, um, farming stopped on and nature took over with progressive changes in plant community structure. And eventually we went to from old fields to forest community. And, um, you know, some areas we have a mid story. And so it's a, um, <clears throat> and it says that the forests are fragmented with diverse edges that can, that can be rich in biodiversity, but there are a few extensive stands of mature forest with closed canopies that aren't fragmented. And that's pretty typical across Massachusetts, even Western Mass. And I think the conservation, um, Nature Conservancy, I believe, did a study some years ago and found that large unfragmented tra tracks were a rare habitat type. And there are neo migrants, that, neo tropical migrants that require them. And they're in, many of them are in decline. So I pointed that out in this paragraph, and it um, it's kind of like an, it serves as an introduction. And the second paragraph says how fortunate we are to have so much protected land. And uh, I've got a, what I'm saying being popping up in front of me, so I can't see the whole document. Um, well, I'm trying to make it the right size. Yeah, I don't. OK, anyways. So as we get down through here, if I could just skim through it and then come back. Um, we acknowledge in here that we passively manage our forest, except for trail maintenance that's, that's necessary. Trees come down and stuff. It names some strategies that are possible to implement. And I added control of the, uh, destructive insects. I think Michelle brought that up having to do with white, uh, red pine. Um, somebody added uh, control of invasive species plants. That's great. That's me. I'm the red. I had for that. And this, this paragraph um, says a lot about what we do, what we could do, and what we pay attention to. The yellow highlighted sentence is the one we stumbled over last time. And I didn't find a record of exactly what words we agreed on. So what we have here is my recollection. And I ask for you, particularly Michelle, to see if it meets muster. Does Aaron have the copy that we edited last time just to not reinvent? I don't know. I think this is pretty close. I, I'm fine with it the way it is, with the where it says may carefully consider pros and cons. I can also, Michelle, I can ask Erin to just, you know, she'll probably watch this tape when she's feeling better. And, um, you know, she can compare that to whatever the discussion, wherever we landed. But I, 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 I kind of agree with Alex. I, I thought this is kind of a nuanced sentence as to where we landed the last meeting when we when this came up. Yeah, and it looks good to me. I'm not, I'm not concerned about it. Well, and Alex, to your to your point earlier in the document, I did skim through this this morning and thought it was pretty well done. I would I would look to Bruce and Michelle for any of their 
comments maybe today or you know in in the coming days yeah uh, about those earlier paragraphs um so we can see that bruce has crossed out the the red where it says the director of conservation and development and what he actually did is move it to the bottom mm -hmm. so he deleted so it here but it's still in there there you go saw that down below yet this morning so I had a couple of comments. I didn't have time to turn it around to everybody, but um, which I can add to the document, but maybe just for the sake of everybody hearing right now, can I just comment on a couple of things? Please, please do. Um, so in regard to the insects, I just want to be more clear about, so you mentioned the control of um, destructive insects. I just think some language about non-native invasive would be useful because there's lots of native destructive insects that just are part of the ecosystem that don't necessarily need interventions. Um, I We've talked about salvage. I don't know if that requires more discussion. I mean, I um, dead standing trees are, are good for wildlife too. So I, I don't know if that oh, we want to yeah. give a carte blanche to salvage. Um, it just in general, when, in my work, we're very, very careful about talking about salvage because you know, I'm not concerned about the town's motives, but in general, it can lead to um, a lot of taking of trees. Um, then I guess into the further down on the second. Can I, can I, pause, yep. can I pause you yep. just, I, um, the words around salvage define the kinds of events where salvage might be allowed. And I, I had in mind a, Mount St. Helen type environment where a big wind comes through and just puts everything on the ground and it's a mess and trails are covered and so on rather than um, um, not rather than something that's not devastation. Okay. And we can put it. So it, it says tornadoes and stuff like that. So I, and later on in the document, it says that we will leave standing trees. It explains their, their value. So if you think that that's not covered, please please provide some words. Okay. Um, yeah, I just wanted to point out that it can be tricky um, without context. Um, and then further down on the second page, I just I want to just point out that this this is good with the soft mass stuff and the the species um the I mean from my perspective I think that forest management has started to progress to more like a biodiversity um outlook rather than a wildlife centric one which I think that talking about the masts and the berries is very wildlife centric rather than talking about, you know, soil microbe communities and insect biodiversity, which, you know, in turn supports bird reproductivity. So um, the way that I think about forests is kind of transformed since, um, you know, in the last 20 years to thinking about bigger biodiversity pictures, all the way from, you know, what's in the soil and the the fungal communities um, to the to the end of that food chain, but I don't know that that's well represented at this point with the this. Yeah, so when I wrote this, I I said I I sort of envisioned somebody looking at this policy document who is new to this whole thing, and I the only place I get close to microbes is talking about trees falling on the ground and creating a microcosm for all kinds of life forms. Um, I just didn't know what to put in there that somebody could grab onto and without having them glaze over. And so also, one thing, sorry. Go ahead. One thing that struck me, I didn't write this in my notes back to you, but it didn't seem like that particular piece had lots of more dimension than other things that could have equally had full paragraphs. And I, I wonder if as a policy document, we could truncate it some, add maybe what Michelle's talking about as a sentence or two. Um, it feels overly long and detailed compared with other things you could say about the other sections. 
So I, 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 I agree. I, I mean, if you look at the time uh, stamp on some of these words, you'll find that there were a lot of them were written after midnight. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so that's just, that's my next layer of thought about it. Yeah, so I hand it over to you guys to to look it over and make it better. That's all I can say. Okay. If that means fewer words, if that means adding words, go to it. Uh, you know, I'm I'm not going to follow my sword over this, but it 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 evidently was terse and not clear the way it was presented previously. Okay. Now it says wow. more than anybody expected. I think somewhere there's a middle ground. All right. Well, I mean, I'm happy to look at it again. Yeah. Michelle, did you have anything else or were those your couple of comments? I mean, I didn't I have a lot of time to look at it this morning, but th those were just my three off the bat comments. So, yeah, I, can so... Take a, I can take another look. Maybe I'll wait yeah. for Bruce to look at it again. All right. Yeah. Can I add one, Alex? If we go back to the first paragraph, and I don't know if I'm overthinking this, no, but here we go. Wait a minute. I gotta get up there. Yeah. There we go. I might be overthinking this, but again, overall, I think this is a great, you know, start and then we can tweak it the way all of us agree. But there was part of me in that first paragraph that wanted to acknowledge that there was forest for farmland, you know, just this starts at, you know, kind of saying, well, we cleared all the, we cleared much of the forest in Massachusetts and New England for that matter for, for agriculture. But I don't know, there was a part of me that kind of wanted to, to say there was, there was, there was forest before, you know, settlers, before European settlers cleared oh. the whole damn place so yeah the whole i understand you know all you got to yeah. do is go to the harvard forest and look at the yeah. uh, displays we... of the land use changes yeah. kind of where do we start history here but where anyway do we start? So, yeah so anyway just a comment um but anyway yeah so I th I think and, if, we... and if dave if you got a, a more accurate number it never hurts to you know, to say two thousand three hundred, if it's yeah, we've got a we've got another number for you. We'll get that. To okay, you. great. So maybe we can leave this and just say, please provide me comments, and I'll do my best to integrate them. And uh, I'd like to get this to, if if somehow we could come to some agreement that uh, it goes to the commission for their next meeting. Um, uh, we're we're not making any decisions, so I'm not too concerned about deliberation. Um, it's the board that makes the decision, the commission, I mean. So all I can say is send me your comments. I'll integrate it. I'll send something out. And, and if, it, if, you, if it's okay to send it to the, to the commission for their review and comment, I need to move that process along. Okay. We need to move that along. I don't need, I say I, but I mean we. So if we're done with this, I'd like to move to um, the third item on the agenda, which is a review of rules for some other towns on firearms, hunting, and a recommendation that comes from Mass Wildlife. So if you want me to do the sharing, I've got those documents already up. Okay. I'll get out of this. Uh, how do I get out of this? Stop the share. I think I brought it up.
Um, Bruce, do you have? No, you don't. Sorry for being silent. I've got the document up on my screen, but when I go to share, I can't see it. Uh, you wanna... oh, here we go. Here we go. Can you see that document? Yes. Okay. So with this, stop sharing, sharing, you are sharing. Okay, fine. So with this, I also have um, the map of the trails, and I'll get to that in a minute. But um, so with this conversation, I'd like to go in and look at a recommendation that came from my discussion with Mass Wildlife having to do with Blaze Orange. As you know, Blaze Orange is recommended that people wear when they're in the act of hunting. But since we allow hunting on conservation land, when I talked to Mass Wildlife, they said, well, you could always recommend that people walking in those uh, parcels where hunting is allowed, that they wear blaze orange and that their companion pets wear blaze orange. So these are for your consideration mm -hmm. as recommendations having to do with hunting. And I'll just give you a second to read them. They're, they're pretty close. I like number three. Yeah, I skimmed these this morning. Again, this is this is a safety recommendation. The first one just in, just is about dogs. The second one starts to involve people. And then the third one is just a rework of people and dogs. I don't have a strong feeling either way. I do notice there's a little typo there on website, right? CMAS Wildlife Web, S-T-I-E, at. Where, where, where are you looking? Oh, right in, there. I see e it. Each one, yeah. I think it's just in each one, it's S-T-I-E instead of S-I-T-E. So are we discussing whether or not to have one paragraph versus two paragraphs? Yeah, they all say this basically the same thing. Um, okay. The third one is the most complete. How do I get yeah. rid of? How do I get rid of this text that's coming on my screen? Annotate. I don't know. I don't know. Oh well. I mean, I'm in favor of the most concise, so just the single versus one for dogs and one for people. Which one is that, Michelle? Well, is it, okay, so the third one is where um, orange, both people and pets, right? Versus the first two or one for, oh, wait. Sorry, maybe I'm not seeing the differences here. Uh, the, th the third one moves the thought of for people using areas where hunting is allowed. That's that, okay. that got moved up from. Um, that's different than the second one. So it sort of says, well, who should pay attention to this? I mean, I would just it's kind of just a good precaution. 
-hmm. Well, it's required if somebody's hunting. If you're if you're bird hunting, um, a hat's required, like for pheasants. But for hunting, five hundred square inches is required. I didn't say that here. I think keeping it simple for the general residential user is the best. Yeah. Okay. So if and when, when I write up something about hunting, um, one of these will be in the write-up. And I think it probably won't be the one that's just limited to dogs. It'll probably make a recommendation for people also for their own safety. And I'm assuming that if we eliminate some areas from hunting, that other areas will be open. So that's why the people are are included for their own safety. Yeah, I'm okay. sure you were thinking of this too, um, Alex. But if we, if if the commission decides to close some areas to hunting, many of our lands are adjacent to land that will be open for hunting. So I, I think it's still a wise decision on the part of people using our trails if you go out during hunting season and you have alone or with a group or have a dog you should yeah. wear orange just to be safe and safer. and like around here we have um you know like on the robert frost trail it's sometimes private lands open to hunting but the signage su may suggest to people that it's amherst lands because it's town of Amherst signage so just to keep the confusion down I think just a blanket recommendation for wearing orange during the hunting season when you're on the trails is covers it yeah okay good point I'll make the modification uh after this call but not now I'll just mm -hmm. try and move on sure um but I'll I'll that's easy to remember um Dave's comment back by Michelle so uh where is my where's my ability to move this up and down oh i don't want to use that how do i get rid of this sorry there we go there we go so here we have the list of um, parcels where hunting is now allowed on the town website. And what I wanna do is bring up the map that, um, that Aaron made. You know, let me go get that if I can. Is that a word file? I don't think so. I think it's a, P it's a PDF. I had all these open. Hmm. I guess I have to go get it. Bruce, while Alex is doing that, I'm going to make you a co-host. I have a medical appointment okay. shortly after one. So if... I'll leave my computer okay. on, but I'm going to make you the co-host just in, as I have to sure. out just down the street for a medical mm -hmm. last minute medical appointment. Okay. Okay. So You see that map? Mm -hmm. Yep. Dave, uh, before you go, you're probably the only one who can name the parcels that have a lot of green in them. And this is Lawrence Swamp is one of them, but I'm not quite sure which polygons are Lawrence Swamp. 
And I think we had said before that Lawrence Swamp is about the only one that doesn't have a lot of green in it. Yeah, so those lower lower right hand corner where your cursor was just seconds ago, those are all I think those are all part of Lawrence Swamp. Um So it would be this paragraph here. Why is yeah. This this green Mm -hmm. this, those this greens green that looks like a pistol. Mm -hmm. And that one's probably not enough to consider. Are both of these Lawrence Swamp? I think they are both Lawrence Swamp. And is the one in between Lawrence Swamp? I think it all is. Um, so I'm I'd have to just... get together with, with Aaron and figure out which... I suppose they have individual names. They do. They do. So um... all I have is... Listed well, up. some of them, if they're Lawrence Swamp, some of them we just lump them under that. I'm just kind of trying to... It's hard without the roads. That's the rail trail, that long linear piece of purple. Um, so it's south of the rail trail. Um, it's a little hard without streets, but a lot of that is Lawrence Swamp. Um, well, maybe I'll get together with Erin uh, when she comes back. But this map would basically eliminate Atkin Flats, Eastman Brook, Catherine Cole, Holyoke Range. Uh, Houston Gage, Podlick, and Simmons Farm. Leaving Lawrence Swamp. So that would be the only, you're saying that would be the only area where we allow hunting? So far, um, we did have a discussion about um, how much of the buffer goes over, but those two parcels don't have much buffer in them and pretty clearly that if the buffer was the deciding factor they would stay open to hunting and open to hunting um there was a discussion about whether or not to um allow firearms on there or limit it to archery or or not to allow archery, let me back up, to continue to allow archery on all of the lots, but eliminate firearms on all but Lawrence Swamp. Firearms being the major safety issue. Could you remind me, Alex, uh, as a non-hunter, um, why archery and is archery safer? Remind me. Um, What's the difference? Why why would we say archery is okay and firearms not? Yeah, most archery shots are within 30 yards of the person. Mm -hmm. And the majority of them are headed down towards the ground. Because tree mm -hmm. people are in tree stands. Mm -hmm. And even if somebody's standing on the ground, an arrow is doesn't go very far. In, in an open field, it can go a ways, but it's easily deflected by branches and leaves and trees. Um, crossbows are not allowed except by paraplegics. Um, so there won't be crossbows. Mm -hmm. um, and rifles are most often shot from the ground, parallel to the ground surface and um and carry the safety issue is that it's difficult uh with so many trails to know that the background that you're shooting at is a safe background mm -hmm. and um so mm -hmm. i was trying to make this conversation less complicated by separating the safety issue between firearms and archery. It, they don't have to be. If um, and also archery doesn't make noise. Mm -hmm. I'm well, in favor of yeah. I'm in favor of separating them the way Alex described. 
I have, a, I have a question about Houston Gage. That's not on this map, right? But did we see a visual of that one with the buffers? I'm sorry, Michelle, say it again. Houston Gage isn't is in Shootsbury, so it's not on this map, right? Do we know that it would not count? Yeah. I I um Somebody is working on the solar bylaw, and I asked if the solar bylaw would apply to lands in other towns that the town that Amherst administers. The answer is no. And so I don't know if our land use policy apply to mm -hmm. parcels that we administer in another town. Okay. So I would suggest that they do. Um, for the very reason that Amherst, Houston Gage is a very unique property. I'll be right back. Um, I don't know all the history of how it happened. It's a it's it's an oddity in the state, I think. But somehow, the previous many years ago, the director of conservation somehow got this through the state process. So we own we. We own and we have care, custody, and control, the commission does, over a piece of property in another community. That's very rare, extremely rare. But the Amherst Conservation Commission has care, custody, and control over that parcel in Shutesbury. Um, Houston so, Gage. Houston Gage. So I would think that your land use policy does apply there. Um, so, Those are actually two different parcels. Yes. So, and there are trails there. So I think it's a good thing to put on the, 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 the parking lot here to take a look at Houston Gage and the trails and have ask Erin to do, if she hasn't done it already, kind of the same analysis for, you know, hunting that she did for our properties in Amherst. Okay. Um, so, um, what I'd like to do with your consent is write up something for the commission that uh, explains what we've done and how we arrive at a conclusion or recommendation and recommend that we eliminate firearm hunting from those lands where the buffers essentially cover the lot, the parcel, leaving open Lawrence Swamp or at least two of the parcels in Lawrence Swamp, if I can identi actually identify which is which, um, to firearm hunting. And if somebody wants to talk about um, archery or you know extending that uh, or changing that, fine. I, but I would like to at least draft a starting place for discussion. I think that'd be great. Um... I agree. If you would. I'm still, I still, honestly, I still have a, there's something nagging me about archery a little bit. And I'm I'm just thinking of a, I don't know why I'm thinking of like Podic, Catherine Cole and how small those areas are. And is, is archery any safer because the arrow only goes, you said 30 yards? No, the target is, is, you can shoot at something a hundred yards, but but the probability of hitting the target goes way down, mm -hmm. unless you're a really good shot. Mm -hmm. uh, but most there's statistics on um, the probability of making a killing shot with distance, and I can go to Mass Web Mass Wildlife and ask them for the statistics on accidents involving archery compared to um, firearms. And actually, there aren't all that many accidents involving firearms. I know. I, I'm a little worried about that, Alex, because as I said, I've been doing this here for 20 years, and I'm not aware that we've ever had a firearm or archery accident in the towns of Amherst. So I don't, I know <laughs> it's a little hard for me to think of us hanging our hat solely on, because I think the statistics won't bear bear it out. I think we had this discussion some weeks ago or months ago about how, yeah. you know, there's more people using trails and, and, you know, we're, we're doing this overall for the safety of all users, 
young and old and and so anyway and, and for the bow i mean we are still talking about compound bows right mm -hmm. and compound. i mean one thing which are terrifying to me I and mean, i've shot one before and um they're you know lethal but one thing about shotguns or guns is that when somebody is out shooting you can hear it and you know it and then you can make a decision about how safe you feel in that environment but i don't think that you would ever know if somebody is bow hunting on a property uh, that's just perspective like that i mean uh, i've been in, yeah well how about if i draft something you can talk about it you can change it um it's not it's just a place to start but it, if we're going to get this before the commission before december it needs to start with something mm -hmm. yeah we have no information dave about like how many people use the hunting lands or the lands for hunting or how important it is i mean okay no stats no it, it would help me to have something in prose that i could read that would make me kind of oh, this is, how do i think about this Okay. Apologies. So let me let I've me. I've got to run to this medical appointment. I'm going to just leave this on. So okay. I'll, I'll appear to be here, but just so you don't lose the meeting. All right. Thanks, Dave. Dave what I'm going to do while you're gone is I'm going to bring up um, bylaws from the town of Lincoln, Concord, and Northampton to show what other towns are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, and all of them have barred firearms from their town public land except northampton has one area right on the river where you can use a firearm so let me yeah it's it sounds like that's kind of the direction we're heading is toward a a, a safety you know the pre premise here is is we believe our lands would be safer with less hunting uh, for the yeah. following reasons so i get it so i i went to concord lincoln northampton and found something. I went to Pelham and Shrewsbury and Leverett and found nothing. So there, it's not all the same. I think that the conservation lands and use and population of Amherst probably aligns more on the Lincoln end of the spectrum increasingly than the Pelham and Shootsbury like population to open space um, ratios. So Lincoln was just hunting or no hunting and there was no distinguishing between bows and... No, well, hold on, I'll bring it up. I do have to go soon also, but I'll just hold on. This is quick. I sent you these documents, by the way. Yeah, I scrolled through it. It was a very good informational handout with lots of key stuff. So this is Lincoln and I highlighted stuff just to make it easy. But I really like this two pager. Mm -hmm. I like it too. I think we should mimic. This is like a trifold, right? Like a brochure that would be at a kiosk, I think. So it could be. Yeah, but I've never, yeah. it looks like it, but I've never, um, you know, I just found it on the web. I've never seen it in, in hard copy. But down here, we've got hunting, trapping, carrying firearms, and willfully disturbing or endangered wildlife is prohibited. period. This is Lincoln mm -hmm. with no exceptions. And then this is what they chose to say about dog walkers, but that's another subject. And it, I thought it was interesting, Michelle, just a tiny comment that dog walkers must always carry a leash. I saw that. That seems like a good idea. <laughs> it doesn't say the dogs must be leashed all 
it says dogs must be leashed or under voice control at all or under voice control at all times. Anyways, that's what It the. also says that dogs must be put on a leash when passing other people, Yeah. which is a different, I feel like that's harder to do, but consider it. I talked to um, someone that worked at a land trust that says he started walking around, did I already say this, with leashes and handing them out to people who were not, <laughs> not having their dog on a leash just for his PR At a place where dogs were supposed to always be on leash. So that was his. Well, I love that. <laughs> well, I just highlighted it because I know it's uh, on our mind. And then they, I highlighted this trail etiquette thing down here. Yeah, I like that. I think I like that it um, points out how to deal with horses. I like I have I'm around horses a lot with friends with horses. And that's constantly a challenge, a safety challenge to you know, number of people, but yeah, this is, this is great. I mean, it, it would be great if we could do something like this and the QR codes, like, you know, open up the opportunity for things like reporting stuff or trail maps and all that good stuff. Um, I have to go, but how do you, did you just want us to review it further or did you want, I don't know, Alex, what's what's the homework other than the um forest? Look look over definitions, look over forest management. Uh, you might want to write something about bugs. Bugs. And insects. I like <laughs> bugs. Um hold on. Let me just pull up. This is a uh, town of Concord's hunting bylaw. I can send this to you. Yes, please. And they have the 500 feet of the boundaries of a portion of Great Meadows National Wildlife Refuge, which my family gave to the Concord, to the town of Concord. And it's where I grew up. Um, and then I have Northampton, hold on. go through this every time to get something. I made a special little file for this meeting. And this is Northampton. So... Can you send us that one too? Yeah, I'll send yeah. it to you. But basically, hunting is and uh, carrying firearms and other wep and or other weapons, so that might include bows, is prohibited on all conservation land except this Rainbow Beach Wildlife Management Area, which is down by the river. And Beaver Brook, I'll send this to you. Great. Those right. are the only towns where I have something for you on how they're handling hunting. Okay, that's a good diversity. Thank you. Yeah. All okay. right, I gotta go, but I'll I'll see you guys um next week. Thanks, Alex. Okay. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you write up something on hunting and getting out, get it out to you, and you can provide your. Okay. Comment. So, Alex, I think you have to stop the sharing in order for me to stop the meeting. There we go. All right. I'm, I'm clicking the leave button. Wait a minute. How do you think we did today? Oh, we're, good. We're still, good we're, still being, we're still being recorded. Oh, sorry. Uh, we, we got through quite a bit. Yes, and we I think we're reaching close to consensus on a, a number of these. So great. Thank Thanks. you for guiding us down the track. Thank you. All righty, I'm, I'm hitting the leave webinar button. Thank you.